here's the story. It's a little past 10 p.m. right now, and uh, I was editing a movie reaction for a couple. I was a couple hours into the edit, and then um, something went wrong with my computer, and then I lost all the progress on that edit, and I went, Whew. screw this. The whale <laughs> been on the to do list. <laughs> so I was like, sure, <laughs> why not? Seems like a good time. I've never seen the trailer for this movie. I've heard great things about it, specifically that Brendan Fraser is awesome in it, and I love Darren Aronofsky's work. I know they can be <laughs> quite sad and intense. I'm not sure exactly what the movie's gonna fully uh, entail or or be about. Uh, but the, the subject matter does sound intriguing to me, at least from the, the few things I've, I've heard about it. I've told you guys you've been here as part of the Reject Nation for a while. Yeah, I've been in therapy for like a decade at this point. And, you know, a big part of a lot of my therapy discussions has has definitely been my struggles with body dysmorphia. I've had it since I was a little kid. Binge eating and, and using food as a coping mechanism. I've had some massive weight gains and weight losses over the years. It's a constant struggle. Every time I'm on camera, it's the first thing I'm always thinking about myself is my stomach. Even when I got stressed by that, I instantly get this urge to be like, I'm going to go get Taco Bell or something like that. <laughs> While I know this movie is not going to be any anything like that, at least I imagine it won't be necessarily about that. That was part of the intriguing part of the subject matter of, oh yeah, a guy who uh, uses, like pretty much harms himself with overeating. And uh, I, I can relate to that to a certain extent. Definitely not to the degree of the makeup effects that I've seen applied to Brendan Fraser, but there's a part of me that immediately was like, yeah, I feel like I can understand a decent amount of that subject, at least. Regardless, I'm here to throw that all out the window, throw my personal life out the window, and just watch this movie. So with that in mind, let's escape. Leave a like, uh, subscribe, and click that notification bell to get notified when we got a reaction up on this channel that might pique your interest. Full length reaction watch alongs so where you sync up with your own copy. Of the whale, I'm, I bought this off Amazon just now. Uh, available for our super sexy rejects at our Patreon page. Thank you to everyone who's become a super sexy reject. Sincerely, your support has been exceptional. Without further ado, let's see what all the hype is about. <laughs> Interesting. Is it? In this aspect ratio, the whole movie? It'd be good for everyone to review the paragraph structure PDF I sent you a few weeks ago. He's not on screen. And yes, the camera on my laptop still doesn't work. Believe me, you're not missing much. Oh. This title has always fascinated me. Oh! Ah, oh, jeez. Just use your key. Gosh, are you okay? Should I call an ambulance? I should call an ambulance. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Do you have a phone? My phone's dead. I need to. Please just read it. Okay. Because I knew that the author was just trying to save us from his own sad story. This book made me think about my own life, and then it made me feel glad for him. Oh, he's the whale. Yeah, that makeup is incredible. It's an essay. But why did you have me read it to you? Because I thought I was dying, and I wanted to hear it one last time. This is a Darren Aronofsky movie. He's probably going to die. Shut up. I'm trying to... What? Hush. You probably have really high blood pressure, man. Deep breaths. <sighs> He's got such a sincerity to his performances, man. What was my blood pressure? 238 over 134. Wowie. That's a high. You must be from New Life. Why the hell would you want to believe that the world is about to end? I believe that when Christ returns, it's going to be beautiful. Yes. Believe me, he doesn't want to hear about New Life because it's caused him a lot of pain. Oh. This guy's just going to stick around, isn't he? Killed his boyfriend. Killed his boyfriend? What? He probably won't be here next week. Where is he going? I'm sorry. Put it together, man. <laughs> You have congestive heart failure. If you don't go to the hospital, you'll be dead by the weekend. You will die. Sounds like that's what he wants. Well, then I better get to work because I have a lot of essays this week. God damn it. I'm sorry. 
<clears throat> Did you still want to hear about Christ's message of love and salvation? No, he does not. Oh my God. I still don't understand why you had me read that essay to you. This is a really good essay. This, this really, this has to be based on a play, yeah? Has a, has a real play rhythm. I'm sorry. You say you're sorry one more time, I will shove a knife right into you, I swear to God. Go ahead, what's it gonna do? My internal organs are two feet in at least. <laughs> I have a good morbid sense of humor. Please. That's sad. Just watching your friend die. Thank you. Oh, man. That is fucking sad. Later they set out on a ship captained by the pirate named Ahab. His entire life set around trying to kill a certain whale. I think this is sad because whale doesn't have any emotions. Oh. It won't help him at all. This book made me think about my own life. Hmm. He's ultimately the whale, but he's also the other characters. We are counting this week. I wonder why the choice to shoot it in this aspect ratio. I wonder how long this is going to last. God, this level of self harm. Does this mean I'm going to get fat? <laughs> so, how's school? You're a senior, right? You actually care? Well, of course I care. So, <sighs> yeah, he's sweating his ass off. I just thought that maybe we could spend some time with each other. I'm not spending time with you. You're disgusting. Damn. This is... This is a terrible week. You'd still be that piece of shit dad who walked out on me when I was eight. All because he wanted to f*** one of his students. Can I have one of these? <laughs> Yet she's here. Just thought that maybe we can get to know each other. I don't even know why I'm here. Oh, he invited her directly. I can pay you. I can pay you. How much can you pay me? Everything I have. 120,000, something like that. I'd have to check. Don't tell your mom. <laughs> Stand up and walk over to me. Ellie, I can't really. Shut up. Come over here. She is a commanding presence. God. Oh, oh wow. Uh, shuts that door. Doesn't even want to give herself a second to feel sorry for him. Candios! They put a 20 in the mailbox. Everything okay in there? Yeah. Everyone just wants to check up on him. It measures perspiration. It's an indicator of stress. Here. I don't need a little machine to tell me to take a few deep breaths and stop sweating. Uh, sometimes you do, though. Was she here? You haven't seen her since she was eight years old, and you're going to reconnect with her by doing her homework for her? It's fine. It's not fine. You're not helping his stress level. It doesn't look like she has any friends. <sighs> Come on. I'm worried that she's forgotten what an amazing person she is. Oh. Shit, I have to go soon. I hate these night shifts. College kids. Trying to help, but also enable. Very interesting. All from a few nights ago. 
Oh, oh my god. Are you choking? <laughs> This guy could die at any moment. Chew your food like a normal human being. You could have just died right in front of me. I'm sorry. Seems like a guy who's made a lot of mistakes in his life, but is probably a decent guy underneath all of it. It's a really depressed one. You say that Walt Whitman wrote Song for Myself. Yeah. It's called Song of Myself. My title's better. <laughs> It's overwritten and dumb and repetitive, and, and in reality, he's just some worthless 19th century f Ouch. That's an interesting perspective. It would make for an interesting essay. Yeah, man, you might be onto something with your part of the uh, homophobia part. Is your mother with anyone right now? No. Why are you interested? <laughs> no. Of course not. I love their scene work together, man. They are so good together. Why'd you gain all that weight? I don't. If you're going to interrogate me, I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, it's like he... Did he do it intentionally? Someone close to me passed away, and it... It had an effect. You had him over for dinner once when Mom was in Montana visiting Grandma. Ah, uh, damn. How'd he die? I don't... I, I really don't want to talk about that right now. Fascinating. Tell me what you really think. You want me to write what I really think? I'll be right back. In like 20 minutes. <sighs> Man, the tuck and pull of Sadie Singh's performance here. It's got a lot of depth underneath those eyes. The kind of actor you could feel what she's thinking. And Brendan Fraser is okay. Nah, he's phenomenal. I get all the hype. Oh, <laughs> uh, asked about the boyfriend. You okay? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. <sighs> Who's outside? Are you his friend? Or? I'm his daughter. Are you surprised? Yeah, I guess. What's more surprising, that a gay guy has a daughter or that someone actually found this piece? <laughs> Wrong from New Life? What I like about religion is that it assumes that everyone is an idiot and that they're all incapable of saving themselves. I think they've got something right with that. You could write an essay. I have some pamphlets that I think would be... Uh, <laughs> Why did you just do that? Are you coming back tomorrow? I'm sorry, what's happening? Yeah, what, what are you? I'm really uncertain about that whole dynamic there. I have probably read everything New Life Church has ever written. That's great and everything, but these tracks are just the beginning. There's so much more in the Bible that we can't... I've read the Bible. <laughs> God creates us, expels us from paradise. We wander around for thousands of years, killing each other, before he comes back and saves 144,000 of us. Meanwhile, 7.5 billion of us fall into hell. <laughs> Yeah, that is perspective. There's a reason why I knocked on your door right when you needed someone the most. Isn't there any way I can help? I mean, it seems like he needs someone the most all the time. Well, there's something you could do for me. I hope you know I wasn't. I'm not. Oh my God. I'm... Please, you gotta believe me when I say I'm not attracted to you. You're a fetus. Please, just let me help. Thank you. It's very helpful. Praise be to God. It's a fat guy wheelchair. And would you pay for this thing? Nothing. We ordered it for a patient a few months ago. What happened to the patient? They lost a lot of weight. <laughs> Good? Yeah, actually, this is really nice. Yeah, that's great for him. Should've got an electric. Where are you from? Uh, Iowa? <laughs> You're from Iowa. And you came to Idaho to do missionary work? <laughs> He's dying. He's refusing to go to the hospital. What he needs is spiritual guidance. <laughs> I 
nice safety slide over. My big brother did some missionary work for New Life. Went to South America. Dad had set it all up. Pushed him into getting married to this girl from the church he barely knew. Practically arranged. He met someone else. Fell in love, started a whole new life. I thought he was gonna be able to get over all that religious stuff, but it was like a cancer. He couldn't shake it. Didn't need to be you, man. Stopped sleeping, stopped eating, lost a ton of weight. Mm-hmm. This guy's out jogging on a bike path near the river in Lewiston, sees something washed up on shore, and that was Alan. The love of Charlie's life and my brother. Oh. To this day, my dad won't admit it, denying him to the end. Damn. In a few days, he's probably going to be dead. So what he needs is for you to leave him alone. I'm the only one who can help him. You understand me? Yes. Well, he managed to sneak up on their conversation. Actually, I got another night shift tonight. I better uh, be good for the night. Bonded by the trauma. I mean, they were probably bonded before that, but Alan's death just unified them even more. Champions. Yeah, you can. Uh... Money in the mailbox. Leave it on the bench. I'm Dan. Charlie. Have a good night, okay? Just leave the fucking pizza. His apartment smells. This notebook is recorded. I hate everyone. <laughs> Hashtag mood. This apartment smells. This notebook is retarded. I hate everyone. <laughs> the, the author was just trying to save us from his own sad story. For a little while. <laughs> God, this, he is just... Prepared to die. I hate everyone. I hate everyone. Forget about the poem. Write whatever you want, whatever you're thinking. He's such a sweet guy. You know, I was in a really strange place in my life when I married your mom. I ask. I understand that you're angry. She's hurt. Okay, you know what? You can't throw me away like I'm a piece of garbage and then suddenly just want to be my dad eight years later. I'm glad because you taught me something very important. People are assholes. Seems like they probably had a really great relationship prior to all that. If you had all that money saved up and you wanted to be a part of my life so bad, you could have been sending money to mom. I did. Could have been a part of my life. Ellie. Who would want me to be a part of their life? I'm hungry. There's stuff for sandwiches in the fridge. There's so much like love and hurt in this movie and a hurt that's masked by anger. This guy's just trying to find acceptance and resolve. I hope you know what an amazing person you are. I couldn't ask for a more incredible daughter. She has no idea he's dying, does she? Such an interesting history with all the characters here. Someone's outside again. I like this inclusion to always show the shot of someone walking around in the back. Is he okay? I don't know. I ground up some Ambien and I put it in a sandwich. Where did you get Ambien? I asked the pharmacist. Nice. Does this make you nervous? Because it's just pot. I, I know what pot is, okay? No, you only think you know what pot is because your parents told you a bunch of lies about uh, it. Don't. <laughs> I've smoked pot before. Ooh. Oh, I'm so impressed. I, 
I wasn't <laughs> trying to impress You've you. You've not smoked pot before. Yes, I have. It, it, it was awesome. It was kind of a problem. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> I had a problem. You were a stoner. You had a hobby. All right, I'm going to go. Just tell him I was here and I'll... If you leave, I'll feed him the rest of the pills I have in the bottle. What? Wow. It's like a devil and angel in this room. <laughs> take a hit. I don't want... If you don't take a hit, I'm going to call the police and I'm going to tell them that you tried to me. Take a hit. Damn. Girl, you are... You are something. Do it for God. <gasps> what are you going to do with that picture? I'm going to mask to it. Look, I'm just f***ing with you, all right? Damn, you are an intense personality. Can I take another hit? <laughs> it goes against your religion. And that makes you a hypocrite. Go ahead. They're all hypocrites. It's part of being a sinner, a human. Do you find me attractive? Because I'm not attracted to you at all. Just so you know. Damn. I just don't think you're very good looking or interesting or intelligent. That's very mean. Is this your way of flirting? You're not from your life. There's a kid in the grade below me who goes there. He told me that they stopped doing door-to-door -door stuff last year. What? What is that going on? What a random plot turn. This guy, Jerry, all he had us doing was standing on corners and handing out pamphlets. You could just tell that he didn't need to earn or prove his faith at all. Yeah, okay. After a while, I was just like, am I really helping? Maybe if you could light one candle. I was worried I was going to get arrested. For smoking pot? For stealing from the mission. Badass. And when everyone went to sleep, I, I took the petty cash. How much? $120,000. $2,436. I thought I could use this money for my own mission. You know, see my faith save just one person. So why do you keep coming back here? Just hoping to get money from Charlie? So that's why you want to save my dad. Uh-oh. Allie, how much money did he offer you? How'd she... what? You think I'm an idiot? You think I would believe that you were coming over here out of the kindness of your heart? Charlie doesn't have any money. Where do you think all the money from his teaching has been going? We could have gotten you anything you needed. Last winter when my pickup broke down and I had to walk through the snow to get your groceries for you. I offered to get your truck fixed. Yeah, and I refused because I thought you had $700 in your bank account. The money's for Ellie. If there was ever any kind of emergency, I would have given you the money. Would you? I offered to fix the truck. I don't care about you. Get that through your skull. Ellie, please. Just die already. Enough! Damn, this is mean. Ellie, your your essay. It's it's a really good essay. Oh, Jesus Christ! Try to make a stir fry thing. Yeah. Almost set the entire apartment building on fire. <laughs> God, this looks so painful. I was left raising our kid and explaining to people that my husband left me for a man. You were more than happy to forget about us for a while. You know that. Gosh. She's awful, isn't she? Is that why you kept her from me all this time? You thought that I would think that you're a bad mother? <laughs> kind of makes you. <laughs> Charlie, she's evil. She's not evil. Oh, what? There'll be a grease fire in hell when he starts to burn. Oh, that is messed up. She's a strong writer. That's your response? The only reason you married me in the first place was to have a kid. I know that. Very pleased. Wow, this is very unpleasant. I never got to say that I was sorry about your friend. Boyfriend. <laughs> You're wheezing. It's gotten worse. Should I call someone? No. Probably really feels like he destroys the lives of everyone he loves. <laughs> we 
we took that trip to the Oregon coast together. I went swimming in the ocean. That was the last time I ever went swimming, actually. You hear the ocean waves? Interesting choice to cut back to this. My legs bled and stayed the seat of the minivan. <laughs> And you said for days after that, I smelled like sea water. <laughs> I'm dying, Mary. I need to know that she's gonna have a decent life and she's gonna be okay. Damn. I have to go. Have anyone else? I need to know that I have done one thing right with my life! If you need anything, before I leave... <laughs> you really just feel like the... the full-fledged history of all these characters, you know? <laughs> I definitely got <sighs> tempted to just blow snot into my shirt. <laughs> you sure you're doing okay? Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Have a good night, okay? <laughs> Dan, you're the MVP of this movie. Does he have this pizza every night? Damn. <laughs> Be nice to get a message like that. Oh, he's really go binging right now. It's like he's trying to end it tonight. Your daughter, she took these pictures of me smoking pot, and she found my church in Waterloo somehow, and then she sent it to them, and they sent it to my parents, and, Wait. and and you know what they said? It's just money, and they want me to come home. How awful is that? Awful, awful. You think Alan died because he chose to be with me? Yes. Wow. Alan loved me. He thought I was beautiful. Halfway through the semester, he started meeting me during my office hours. Uh-huh. It's perfect temperature outside. We took a walk in the Arboretum. We kissed. Huh. Alan can see what I have done to myself. Carly. Okay, stop! This is disgusting! Yes! I'm disgusting! Yes! You're disgusting! You... There you go. He found honesty, Thomas. It's a really fascinating examination, man. I've been replaced by someone who will no doubt have you rewrite less authentic, less you, with every draft. Julian, you wrote, I'm sick of people telling me that I have promise. The truth will set you free. I just want to be honest with you, too. Of course, it doesn't matter. These amazing, honest things that you wrote, they matter. <laughs> this movie is aggressively sad. <laughs> Damn. Those last few months before Alan, I'd come over here, shake him, just scream at him, just trying to get him to fuck eat something. God, that was awful. It was awful for me, too. Yeah, well, you weren't the one who had to identify his body all bloated. They wouldn't let me. I wasn't family. Oh. 
I tried to save him, Liz. I thought that if I just loved him, that he wouldn't need anyone else but me. Aww. Nobody could have saved him. Believe me, I spent years trying. I don't think I believe anyone can save anyone. Only you can save yourself. She was trying to help her. Do you ever get the feeling that people are incapable of not caring? <laughs> I need to talk to him. Is she actually? I didn't actually expect to see her again. Do you ever get the feeling that people are incapable about caring? Capable of caring. I failed. That's a really good essay. I don't care that you're dying. Do you want me to fail out of high school? Is that why you did this? I didn't write it. Read it. I wrote this in eighth grade for English. Why do you? And I felt saddest of all when I read the boring chapters that were only descriptions of whales. <laughs> the author was just trying to save us from his own sad stories. Just for a little while. Wanted to know how you were doing in school, and she sent it, and it's the best essay I've ever read. Why are you f***ing with me like this? I had no idea. <laughs> I'm sorry for leaving you. I was in love, and I left you behind. You did not deserve that. I don't... I don't know how I could have done such a thing. You're so beautiful. You're amazing. Stop. This essay was you. Stop. You. <laughs> You're the best thing I have ever done. You're going to the hospital. You just need surgery or something. Read it to me. Oh, God. Yeah, you fucking kidding me. Oh. Oh, you gotta be shit. I hope you Fuck read you. it, please. Fuck you! Ellie! Daddy, please. Oh. Which is named Moby Dick, and which is what? In the course of the book, the pirate Ahab encounters many hardships. His Go to her bed. This is sad because this whale doesn't have any emotions and doesn't know how bad Ahab wants to kill him. He's just a poor big animal. He said his life will be better if he can just kill this whale, but in reality, it won't help him at all. I felt saddest of all when I read the boring chapters that were only descriptions of whales. Because I knew that the author was just trying to save us from his own sad story. Just for a little while. This book made me think about my own life. And then it made me feel glad for mine. That's a fucking crescendo of an ending right there. Uh. Wow. Oh.
<laughs> I did not put that together that she had written that. I feel like I should have. <laughs> oh, that would be real weird. It's still fucking getting me. Holy God. Oh. Oh, man. I just got to sit with that for a second. Whew. I can't blow my nose. <laughs> that was an experience. All right. I don't think there's a post credit scene. <laughs> Yeah, okay, let's talk about it. Yeah, but I'll be right back. Just gonna blow my nose. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure quite a few times on this channel, and I'm pretty sure that this is the first time I've seen a movie where just like that that final I don't know, I could be blanking on it, but then like that final few moments are just like, wow, this is like epically movie. <laughs> just like literal the literal like crescendo and then and then it's fucking directed by Darren Aronofsky. <laughs> Damn. Uh, that was uh that was that was crazy. Well, all right. Not really knowing much about it other than all the talk about Brendan Fraser's amazing in this film, and it's so sad. And uh, I, I found the experience interesting because... All right, Greg, time to focus. <laughs> time to get your thoughts in order after that. I found the experience interesting because, you know, I, di I didn't know what I was really walking into. Other, it's like someone saying it's so sad. I'm like, well, it's Darren Aronofsky. His shit tends to be pretty sad. And I really love like Darren Aronofsky's work. I think it's very striking. I find Black Swan to be one of the best horror movies I've ever seen. I even like uh, a lot of his most uh, divisive movies. I, I, I I enjoyed Mother, and uh, I I like I like pretty much most things that I I've seen from him, and uh, I know uh, you know Christianity and inclusion is often a, a common thread. And this was one of those things where it kind of starts off in a very melancholic seems like too light of a word. It's harsh. It's like a, a harsh world of this moment in time. Uh quite aggressively right away and normally i haven't seen the fountain though that, that popped up on my head i still haven't seen the fountain uh but when when uh when a movie becomes like so much like that like you know i, I liken it to what i call the, the the student film syndrome or the short film syndrome with like look how freaking dramatic we are look how sad we are to the point where it becomes ineffective because it just feels like that's what they're they're going for but the performances are so strong and it was the moments it wasn't really like the stuff when i would like especially when i get like choked up or cry or something it wasn't really the stuff where it was just going you know be sad be sad or something like that it because because it was it was getting to the it would sometimes linger in in aspects of that where I found myself kind of thinking in my head am I going to end up liking this movie is this going to feel monotonous is it going to feel I don't know if the right word's pretentious but is it going to feel forced right and whenever it was layered once the movie really started to click with me I don't exactly know what point it was but there was a point where 
I started to under really feel like I was understanding who the characters were, at least my interpretation of it. You know, this is the kind of movie I imagine there's some really great think pieces on and, and dissection of the characters because there are fully realized characters. Every character here is, is very much fleshed out and you really get a sense for their background. And it was stuff where, because pain is like what this whole canvas is painted with the pain. <laughs> It was when I honed in on not, not like why the pain is there. And, you know, I thought, I didn't know if it was going to be a movie about, like, a movie that's about body dysmorphia, a, a movie about obesity, you know, like that's, that's an aspect, obviously, but it's, but it's like he has become this physical embodiment uh, of, of his pain, you know, that, that is what he represents as, as this person, as this very obese struggling person who's like on the verge of death and is accepting the fact that he's going to die. He, it's like he shapes himself into that, you know? And I, I didn't know if it would just be, because a lot of these characters have these habits uh, of, and what I mean by why, like why the pain the, specifically the word why, why the pain, why that hit me so hard. Excuse me, guys. I'm just coming off a crying session. I'm trying to get my thoughts perfectly aligned here. Why that hit me so hard is because you would see that there was so much love and that love led to so much hurt. And you really got that sense with this Charlie character, especially him. But you could see that with the even with the, the wife and uh, Sadie Sink and the Ellie character, you could see that there was probably a point in time where their foundation, even before they did the flashbacks uh, on the beach or whatever, there was probably this point in time where they were really happy, you know? And he, and he probably did love them, but just didn't love her, the, the, the wife, how... Like, you could tell he still had a love for her, but just wasn't in love with her because he was really gay. And then the path to being in love with this Alan guy and, and what that did for Alan being part of this church. I can imagine this movie can offend some people, especially with religious. This movie does not do it. To do, if there's one, I'll get into it a little bit later. If there's one criticism I have about the writing of it, it, it has to do with the I'm not religious whatsoever. But there is, there is a criticism I have in terms of how the religion aspects are sort of handled here. Regardless of what that feeds into the character of he just wanted, he's like, maybe I can save this guy by just giving him, you know, a uh, overwhelming flow of love. And he died and he just blames himself, you know. And while these characters often when shit gets too hard, they will escape via either storming out or, or resorting to anger. He resorts to binge eating. You know, it, it is a form of physically harming yourself. And I've I've never, I've been in situations like that where I just want to eat my pain away. I did that for a very long time. And uh, I've gained, like, massive amounts of weight. And it, there would be sessions where, like, every Saturday I just end up throwing up <laughs> just because I would just eat until I threw up. And it... it it's a sad way of living, and 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 I appreciate the movie portrays it in a way that's not trying to make it about that, but it also is kind of about that because really it's about who these people are. It's it is it is a human experience. It is a human journey of everyone here, and how yes, there's a lot of trauma that keeps these people bonded together, but. There's also it's also rooted in a lot of love, and when you have that quality kind of shine through, because I could see, I could, I could see how there could be a lot of people who probably don't like this movie too, because I feel like it could register as I don't know if the right word is misery porn, but I'm gonna go with that. I see I could see how it could register as that, where it's just like look how artistically depressing this shit is. Nah, man, when you got that, that's why that crescendo was so beautiful to me. <laughs> like, 
God damn, that poem he that essay he keeps reciting uh, throughout the whole film, and how you know he's just saying that he just wants to hear it before he dies, and he's just fucking miserable, and he just wants to make his daughter happy. That's all he cares about, and that's that's been consistent with him throughout his whole life. It wasn't like he's been ignoring her. He's wanted to be in contact with her. He's saved up all the money. Like it's it's been a focus of him of his entire life, and it's it's also a journey about everyone learning to just be honest with themselves and being honest with everyone else. You know, like that level of honesty of coming to terms with the truth of how do we really feel underneath? Like it's a movie about emotions. While there's a lot of dialogue parts that can feel repetitive and whatnot, at the end of the day, the the movie is, a, the story is about emotions. The story is about being very honest with, it's kind of like inside out, but on a very adult level. <laughs> it's very, it's so much about just, okay, yeah, you got, the, you're, you, you put this on display. You take out you take you take out all your pain on your body like this. You're a drinker. He's a binge eater. He's led to obesity. He's got all these health problems. <laughs> Ellie's doing everything Ellie does. Liz is very stern and built up. Like, like she goes into the aggressive route as well. But you got a sense of everyone's backstory. And so uh, over time, as you peel back these layers, by the end, you just get to everyone's true emotions. And the movie even had me going with Ellie. It honestly reached a point because at first it wasn't until it was when she sent the letters, the, the, when you find it, cause you're like, okay, she's going to do something with this recording and stuff. It's when she sent the recording off to Thomas's family and, you know, preceding that the mom was going, uh, like she's evil. Da, 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 da. And, you know, it's like, no one to me is born evil. It, it, it's, usually some form of conditioning right and like i don't think she was evil what she was doing but she didn't seem like a great person and i i did when it reached that point of did she do that to hurt thomas or to help thomas i was here going i feel like she might have been trying to hurt him like that's what the move that's that's what i had been sold on where prior to that, prior to the whole like ambient and all that and, and, and the and recording of Thomas, I was really under the impression like, you know what? Yeah, she's she's got a bitch attitude, but but really she loves her dad. And, and like that was very obvious, but I never th- I didn't really imagine we'd get a scene where as I had I had thought that she wasn't gonna come back into the movie, actually. I, I really thought for some reason that she just wasn't gonna come back. Maybe you did and you're smarter than me, whatever. I didn't think she was gonna come back. I kinda forgot about it. I didn't forget. I just didn't think she'd come back. So when when she did come back, and then you see, like, oh, the the essay is what she wrote, this beautiful essay, and this is how. Oh, it's so that's so smart. Like it makes the whole journey worth it. I I honestly think those last few minutes make the whole journey worth it. And um, what was I talking about? <laughs> Sorry, what time is it? It is. It is literally 12.55 in the morning right now, and I'm watching this movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just such a ran- it's been such a random night for me. <laughs> Becoming delusional. Uh, <laughs> the <laughs> oh, uh, this, this stays in the video of me trying to remember what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, with with Ellie's emotions, <laughs> everyone's being honest. You find out where everyone is the way they are. I don't remember what I was exactly talking about. Whatever, this is all staying. I don't, I don't care. This is gonna be raw, like the whale's emotions. And Sadie Sink, whoa, holy! Like everyone can act so well. That's what I was trying to say. Is that I? Ha- the movie was selling me so much on. I-, I actually don't even know if this Ellie girl's gonna. If the movie's gonna end on a note with. Ah, yeah, she might have just been a bitch, uh, but no, nah, she, she like it was, like she was too far gone from the pain and the trauma she experienced. Like it was too far gone, and there was there's that she wasn't gonna ever turn to being to having a resolve. Like Sadie Sink was phenomenal in this movie. Is she nominated? Are the nominations out? I'm. Mis- I mean, yeah, I know they are. 
is Sadie Singh nominated for this film? Because she's so good. Nominated for an Oscar? No, I guess not. Damn. I mean, I don't know who else was nominated, so I'm not going to be like, what the hell? Why this person? I don't know who else was nominated. But she was phenomenal. I, like Her scenes with Brendan Fraser were so were so real and believable and layered. Um, talk about nuance. My God. That was so effective. Loved it. Loved their, I loved their dynamic. There were times with... There's something about the Thomas character. That's my one criticism about the movie. That just... Out of all the pieces... For some reason, he was the only part that I wasn't. It was the only part of the movie that I found myself constantly walking a line with of, is this working for me or is this not working for me? And I don't think it, uh, there's a lot of things like that it did serve for the, the bigger purpose of, of the narrative, uh, undoubtedly. Yeah. And especially with the backstory with Liz, who, by the way, amazing is is she a funny woman or something like that is she like a comedian lady i remember her in the menu uh and she was excellent in that too but um i've never seen her work to this degree she was she was phenomenal absolutely phenomenal what's that actress's name let me find it for you guys hong chow i don't know her work or maybe i do and i just forget but yeah she's uh she was excellent uh, yeah, another, another beautiful performer there. Um, because Dan the Pizza Man. <laughs> uh, yeah, when when it came, my God. Okay, yeah, you know it's been it's been a little bit of a thirteen hour day. <laughs> now, 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 I know I tend to uh, zigzag in a conversation on these reviews post reaction, but it's especially gonna go down tonight, and I'm keeping it all here. Um, yeah, with Thomas. Ty Simpkins, while I think the performer Ty Simpkins did a really good job, the while I'm not a religious person, I did think that there wasn't much given to this. It started to work for me once you find once you find out what the hell is really going on with this guy and why he's really here, uh, and like everything that Ellie ends up finding out that that's when the it's I was like oh, okay this is a, this dramatic shift is actually making this click for me more it's because most of his lines pretty much just felt like America's God told me I, God put me here for a reason you got to find God like it just never got deeper than that and it it didn't become like it never became thought provoking anything that he was pitching or saying I could feel the whoever wrote the because I imagine that this is a very faithful play. Did Samuel D. Hunter, who wrote this movie, also write the the play? I could feel the thought process of of the the writer uh, implementing his views on religion, and you know, like I don't, I don't want to offend anyone here. I really I'm really not a fan because I'm I am the kind of individual who's like, well, I, I'm not. I grew up Catholic. I have a lot of my own reasons of why I'm not religious now. Um, I still think that I I know a good amount of people who do have faith, and whether it be Christian, Mormon, Catholicism, Judaism. I know a good amount of people. And if it works for them, and I see that, like, you know what? You're a good person, and uh, and I can, I can still be myself around you, and I feel, like, really comfortable in, uh, around you. Like, I, I, I love you. You're great. So... I don't want to dog. Uh, I don't. I don't want to dog religion. Dog. I don't want. I don't want to dog religion. The, um, this movie, I thought, like, yeah, you know, there, there are. I have my reasons too for why I'm not a religious person, and I, I. So I, while I don't subscribe to any faith, it did feel like I was hearing a lot of the the, the writer's voice just imposing it and not really giving any nuance to. Uh, Thomas's reasoning for God or belief or or other shit to say to Char like it never became like a real debate or conversation about it you know it just kind of felt like the same repetitive dialogue then he like assholed himself up by the end like that, uh, that, that, that last scene that he had with him like oh dude dick move 
I know he had good intent, but man, <laughs> you know, bad maneuver there. So yeah, that that was the one quality uh, of the movie that I I understand like the purpose it serves thematically for the characters and and for the movie as a whole. I did think, you know, even if it is extremely faithful to the play, that it it could have it could have used some enhancement as opposed to just the ones who are going to have the biggest amount of 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 uh expansion on reasoning and debate is going to be all the characters who are opposed against the religion but the one who is just keep showing up to want to instill the faith is it's never like a compelling argument like I know this is that it's not a Netflix. It, this is not a Netflix series. It's a, it's a movie, but I think a great example of one that does it is um, Midnight Mass, Mike Flanagan show. the The priest on that show, like when he g- does a sermon, uh, I don't remember what episode it was, but I was like, you know what? I follow this guy. I become religious. <laughs> if I was in the room, with this guy, screw it. I'm going. I'm going full Catholic right now. <laughs> And not that it needed to reach that level. I just think it could have used a little bit of peppering of that is, is all I'm getting at. And then I think I, I would have just been fully immersed in it. But yeah, no, this was a, a miserable experience in a lot of ways. <laughs> but one of those one of those that I was I was just full I, I did I did get lost in. And you know, it's it as much as uh in the beginning I was like, this definitely feels like a play. Uh, it, it it began to really evolve into feeling like a film, like, and I mean, I mean that in a really complimentary way. Like, there are certain movies I watch where I just feel like I was watching a play, and and sometimes it's not complimentary. Like, sometimes you gotta you gotta fuse the worlds. I think when you translate uh, play to film, like Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross does an amazing job at that from as being a film. Uh, Fences, while beautifully acted. I really felt like I was just watching a stage play and they were cutting back between the same three shots where here you still have a nice, great use of cinematography, um, atmosphere. You can feel the isolation, yet you get a sense of like, just beyond the door is the outside world where he, you're just never going to go to. And, you know, once in a while, like, Aronofsky will bring in some of his visual. Like, I felt like the ending, especially with him, like, raising up, you know, dying with acceptance and peace and happiness, getting that relief. That felt very Aronofsky-like, and, and even the use of the flashback uh, on the on the beach felt very Aronofsky. So having some of those, like, film language visual flourishes I thought was great. I thought there was amazing music in here. Uh the Liz character, I really like the dynamic between them because you don't really see a dynamic like that in film. And uh, I, I thought that her, she just feels like people I've met. <laughs> like she really does. She really feels like people I've met. Where, you know what was also cool about her? It was nice to get like an, I, I don't think they did, they don't ever make mention of the fact that she is actually Asian, huh? As a Filipino, it makes me happy to see her. The fact that she's a nurse, I think she's a nurse. Am I just projecting? <laughs> um, but at the fact that she's Asian and they don't make it a thing that she's Asian, I'm pretty sure they don't. They have more kudos to that. But the dynamic of you were the best thing that happened to my brother, and I loved you for who you were when my brother was around, and now I must protect you too and look after you as well. It's a, it's a very fascinating dynamic, and again, you could really feel you could feel like these actors all fleshed out the history, and that's like that's what you want from these performances. Is you don't need to say much, but whenever you guys are talking, like I can tell that all you guys know all the memories more than what's being said on screen or even hinted at. Like you guys really know your memories. And yeah, I haven't really touched much on him. Brendan Frazier. I saved it for the end when most people have already clicked off this video. Brendan Frazier is. He's beyond exceptional. He's astronomical in this film. 
I thought I'd be watching a movie where I just kept going, Brendan Fraser doing great, <laughs> you know, where I'm just aware I'm watching Brendan Fraser the whole time. And like, look at Brendan Fraser acting. He became this guy. Hands down, the best performance he's ever done. Hands down. He he was just this dude, you know, and he he wasn't like ever it's like a heavy per no put it dead. It's like a heavy performance. It is. And what I respected so much about it was it did feel like I was looking at someone's life on screen because I'm not even talking about how it correlates with Brendan Fraser, the actor, or something like that. I, I'm talking about how, you know, they had that thing in there where he tries to be optimistic and he tries to find the positive spin when clearly this guy is in a world of his own misery and is just utterly depressed. He he carried this, it, it felt authentic, just so, like, I, the word that comes to mind is sincerity. It's it's just genuine that that uh that tenderness towards others that that interest and care and 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 the power of the language and, the, and and embracing the honesty and like the love that he has you can really feel it just embroiled in so much so much shame and and lack of self worth there's like no self like so much love exerted but no self love you know like even when he talks about Allen to Thomas when he's getting defensive he's like I was never, I was never the best looking guy in the room but he thought I was beautiful like even then before he even became this like shape that he becomes even then you get the idea that this guy never never really had self love did he as much as he could find it elsewhere, as much as he could find love, he never had it for himself. It was such a fully realized performance. It was painstakingly beautiful. Who's he up against? I want to know who's he up against. <laughs> yeah, homeboy. You deserve some awards. Um, Oscar nominations 2033. Oh, you're going up against Austin Butler. <laughs> you did become Elvis for like five years. <sighs> I think Brendan Fraser still deserves it. I've seen both of these movies, and uh, yeah, I think Brendan Fraser deserves it. saying that right now <laughs> anyway guys Austin Butler will get another chance the guy's like five years old he go get another chance let Brendan Fraser have it <laughs> then Austin Butler can go up on stage and slap him ladies and gentlemen what did you think of the whale did you enjoy it I guess I'd give it like a 8 out of 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm confident with that. Like an 8 out of 10. Sure. All righty. Well, nah, I didn't shift like an 8.5. Like the the acting is just too, 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 too bad. It's not my favorite Darren Aronofsky. Like not by, not, not by a long shot. But uh, it's it's still, it's it is very moving. And that ending, that ending like really made the whole thing like really sing for me. Oh, and the the person plays wife also incredible, incredible. She has like one scene in this movie, <laughs> and you're like, she showed up. He she did her homework. <laughs> she was great, and that again, I appreciate the I appreciate how it's not just people screaming at each other. That they, they would they, you could see that it was all at the end of the day. All whatever anger, frustrations, there was always rooted in in love. Anyway, reject nation. Dig deeper in your emotions, and, and and if you're in pain or you find yourself in a stressed or angry state, sometimes I gotta do that. Sometimes I'm like, just kind of like, I do these exercises because 
I can be a very emotional guy. I do these exercises where I'll like close my eyes and I'll just start saying how I feel like it's just very subconscious, very stream of consciousness. And I'll just find my face doing this. <laughs> like I'm just mad. And I'm like, I feel angry. <laughs> like I, you know, I got to go, why do I feel angry? Angry is usually a sign that I'm hurt. Am I feeling hurt by something? What am I hurt by? Like I got to like dissect it a little bit. So I encourage the same thing today. All righty. I'm going to try to edit this other movie reaction first <laughs> to round to it. But thank you for being here.